Uh, next up we have Violin, uh, which is a company that, again, has been in this market for quite a while. So I uh, am glad to have you folks join us, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Standing in your way. All right. Well, thank you for having us. And uh, I love listening to these talks because I keep wanting to jump up and say something. But, uh, <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, now's your big chance. Exactly. So I'm going to totally change this talk. So first, one slide, what is the vision of what we're doing? Is really we're trying to get storage performance on Moore's Law Curve. If you look at the world, x86 multi-core servers, CPU has been going up fantastic for a very long time. Latency, you know, high-speed networking has been going on a slower but bigger step. You know, so maybe five, six years between steps, but they're factors of ten. You know, so but low, you know, high performance, low latency networking, that's done great. But as everybody in here in the flash knows, performance per terabyte for spinning disk has been getting worse every year. You know, capacity keeps going up, performance is flat. You can't spin a, you know, can't spin a disk really faster than 22k RPM because now you're at the speed of sound. We're not making supersonic disk platters anytime soon. So really, there's a place for flash, and it's really about getting the storage performance on the same curves as the servers and networking. Because if they aren't balanced, you know, if I, it doesn't help to put tons of CPU in a system if I can't get storage, or if I can't get the storage from the network. So really, that's the sort of you know, high-level bullet. So what do we do? So fundamentally, we are a purpose-built tier one primary storage array. So if you think of the EMCs, the Hitachis, the IBMs, you know, all these big companies, HPs, that have made, you know, made a big career, big billions of dollar business on tier one storage, that's what we do. We're just all flash. Now, unlike a lot of the companies you see and a lot of our previous speakers have talked about, we are not, we're not building stuff out of commodity SSDs. We're not building them out of you know, cards from different vendors, PCIe cards. We start from the flash chips. You know, this is possible because Toshiba is a, one of the major investors in the company, the largest investor, and it's not just a supply relationship. We actually work together. So we start from the chips, we package them up, we put them into violin intelligent memory modules. These are, these are the cards that have basically can talk to nearest neighbors. This is not a PCIe card. This is a switched memory architecture where all the cards can speak to the other cards. This is fundamentally allows us to have massive backend bandwidth. Now we group these things into a RAID group. One of the great things about this is RAID is inside the system. Our customers never have to worry about RAID levels ever again. They don't focus on do I need RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID whatever. We have made a flash-centric RAID 3 algorithm, all based on getting very high performance. So we group these things together. But what's interesting about this is when the user sees a LUN out of, the, in this case, the Violin 6000, that LUN, all they have to specify is the capacity they want. They don't have to worry about hot spots on cards. They don't have to worry about cards degrading. We handle all of that. So every, if you look at that picture, there's five cards in a group. If I write 4K, is we're going to pick a predictable set of five cards, but the next 4K is a different five cards, and the next 4K is a different five cards. So every LUN is using the whole bandwidth of all of the reliability, all the performance of the system. This is a much more scalable architecture. Now, this picture of the 6000, you know, this is our system we launched at Oracle World last fall, but we've been in the market for several years. So we've been selling all flash arrays for mo more than two years. And people focus on the fact that, look, this 3U box is a million IOs per second. Well, the fact is we scale down and we, you know, a million IOs per second is a really nice number. It's the number with the wind at your, in our face, not the wind at our back. So that's 4K random in a 70-30 read-write mix, which is a typical database load. Now, we could quote massively higher numbers if we were reading only 512 bytes. You know, you'll see that from card vendors. What we're talking about is sustained IOs. Our technology and our use of all these cards is really about sustained performance. You know, we focus very hard on that, and I'll go into the next slide a little bit more, but really what we're doing here is delivering a, re a realistic performance for tier one. But we also scale down. We don't only sell a million IOP box. We, we've been selling you know, in the hundred, multi-100,000 hundred IOP range for a couple of years. You know, this is an important thing is we're, we're, spanning, we're scaling up and we're scaling down. Well, the 6,000 is about the performance of th four of our 3,000 family. 
but we're doing it with less flash than we did the less flash chips than before. We're getting more and more efficient. That's one of the interesting things about having Toshiba behind us and being able to do design from the flash chip upward is that flash as a media is getting worse over time. I mean, we think about from our perspective that we're using flash for enterprise storage. But the enterprise storage market is meaningless to the flash vendors. I mean, they're making tens of exabytes of flash a year. The entire enterprise storage market is in the tens of petabytes. So we're less than a per tenth of a percent of their market. They're not designing flash for us. They're designing it for Apple. And what people in the flash market care about is they don't care about 100,000, a couple hundred thousand write cycles. They care about you know, a couple hundred, a couple thousand. They want more and more dense, more and more cheap. So flash as a media, as it gets smaller and more, smaller and smaller fact, you know, process technology, it's getting worse for a storage. <coughs> Yet in that same time, violin's getting faster and more dense and more reliable. That happens because we're starting from a flash chip layer. If we were using commodity technology that a different target market, you know, a laptop is not doing, a, you know, 50,000 write cycles per cell. It's just not doing it. So Apple is not going to pay for that technology. Our aggregation technology is what makes these things possible. You know, you know, I'd like to say that, you know, we've done tons of work here. We have lots of intellectual property around all these issues. But really what we're doing here is predictable performance. We used to have a tagline called spike-free latency. You know, you think, you look at, sorry, SSDs. And, uh, I'm going to give a plug for the VeloBit guys. They've done great work on publishing, you know, on their blog, descriptions of performance of SSDs and cards. Well, you look at these things, and if you're at a 10% load, uh, you might see an SSD has got a spike of latency pretty rarely in 10 minutes, maybe one or two in 10 minutes. These spikes are where you're getting behind a, you know, grooming, behind a race cycles. But if you get that thing up to 50, 90% load, they're spiking latencies all the time into the milliseconds multiple milliseconds. BioLand's whole purpose in our technology is to get reliable, sustained, low latency performance. So if you take our system to 90%, you know, of the maximum IOPS or more, you're going to see still a flat latency curve. And this is important because people buy flash for two things. It's not just IOPS, it's also latency. I could have somebody who only wants 100,000 IOPS or 10,000 IOPS. What they care about is the latency. So I always say, tell people, latency is for application acceleration, IOPS is for scale. You need them both. So, a little bit more about the 6,000. <coughs> Since we're going after the tier one storage system, tier array, and for primary data, we're not a cache, this has to have all the reliability that you'd expect from an EMC. Of the, you know, we're competing with the EMC, they can show that they're reliable, fault tolerant for many years. So we've designed a system, this 3U system, Every component is hot swappable. So on a live system, you can pull out cards, you can pull out the memory modules, you can pull out the RAID controllers, you can pull out the x86 processors, you can pull out the backplane. But sorry, not passive backplane, but the, you know, the switching, internal switching. Everything is redundant. Pull out the fans, pull out the power supplies. What's key about this is it's not just HA, it's fault tolerant. So there are built-in hot spares for cards. Like, you know, there's four of those cards are hot spares. That's beyond the rating. For, raid control, for the RAID controllers, I have four of those. If I pull one out, there's no performance impact. If I, lose, if I pull out two out of four cards, I'm still running at 75% of maximum IOPS. If I pull out three out of four, I'm running at 50% of maximum performance. The whole goal here is performance, high performance, low latency, but also under failures. Because in the real world, things break. And we can't be a mission critical storage system if you have to take it down to do maintenance or some failures or a code upload or a firmware upgrade. I got to take the system down. Another sort of unique thing about this is we, a lot of the people here have been talking about sort of bifurcated between the network attached guys who are on the SAN and the PCIe guys. I don't think you should have to choose. If you're a PCI person and you want extremely low latency, the 50 to 70 microseconds, you should be able to directly connect the storage system through PCIe. That's something we allow. So HP OEMs a system, when they sell their Exadata killer, it's violin, you know, their VMA, HP calls it a VMA, directly connected to an HP DN980. Lowest possible latency, you know, very high performance, and you can choose the servers you want. 
Now, maybe 80% of our customers are fiber channel. We're an enterprise sale. Fiber channel is big in the enterprise. So we provide lots of, you know, eight by eight gigabit fiber channel. That's most of the customers. That's another option. We have iSCSI for, you know, you can have 10, you know, eight by 10 gigabit iSCSI because they're, you know, for customers who have chosen an all IP backplane. You have customers who want InfiniBand. So QDR InfiniBand, that's another option. The whole point here, and we'll do FCOE just because, you know, why not? You know, uh, you know if, you're, if you're a blade, you know, blade oriented form factor, FCOE does have a, is important. We've designed the system so we can be agnostic to how you connect to the network or even not have a network, but get reliable performance. So that's what we do. And there's a just sort of, we sort of see violin as a system right now. You know, we have customers in all of these areas, but I do want to make clear that it's not just IOPS. IOPS are for scale. Latency is extremely important. You know, if I need 100 microsecond latency, I may not need a, a million IOPS. I may need a tenth of that, but I still need the latency. That's what makes applications faster is the latency. We usually tell people, if you want to see what Violent does for you, look at your system and look at the IOA times and imagine being zero. That's a good first approximation. And as servers come out, as Sandy Bridge comes out, you wouldn't believe how much data a Sandy Bridge system, two socket server, can consume. We've got to keep those things fed. Otherwise, there's no point in upgrading to Sandy Bridge. So we have customers in all of these spaces, really as an, you know, but this is seeing Violin today as a system. So let's sort of pivot to what, what's next. So in order to, historically we've been dealing with smart apps, databases, virtualization, they have their own data management. Uh, or we've been using EMC VPlex with some customers and IBM SVC with others. But in order to take over the tier one storage world, you gotta have your own native, native, native data management. So these are some of the features that we'll be rolling out this calendar year. Not all of them, but we'll see a steady cadence in the next two quarters and three quarters. Uh, now, obviously, as mentioned before, dedupe is an important feature for compression, um, data reduction, thin provisioning has become well known as needing it. But obviously you need snapshots and clones. I mean, all the features that you'd expect from a tier one storage array have to be in the system. And we're, you know, we'll be doing more announcements in the next really 30 to 60 days. All right, so I'm gonna try to focus most on the future in the last, you know, three minutes. So we really see the next stage for violin, assuming, you know, after we've taken EMC and all the incumbent vendors out, um, is violin as a platform. So as I show in this picture, you know, those green lines there, those are x86 servers. And we put pretty powerful x86 servers, hot swappable directly into the box. So we over provision them with CPU and DRAM. And the reason why we did this is to think of Violin as a platform. One of the great things about PCIe storage is it brings the storage close to the application. An alternative architecture is bringing the application into the storage. Now you'll see announcements among a number of these partners of their software running directly inside our box. So you can see in the early phases having app databases running directly inside our system. And now you've got this hot swappable, super fast storage system that can scale up or down with the application directly in the box. Now for those of you who've noticed that little logo near the bottom, big data is another big, that's part of the strategy I own is how do you make flash apply to big data? Now, another thing about big data is horizontal scalability, but also the idea of having the data and the application in the same place. You know, big data is, I can't bring all the data to a centralized place. There's too much. Better to move the application to the data. So imagine a platform now that has high speed storage, all the data management features you need, but also has the big data platforms running inside the storage system. And it's now reliable because every piece of hardware in there is HA and fault tolerant. You know, that is a vision for a storage company that we are executing on right now. And we'll be announcing more and more a time yield. A lot of these are with partners. I mean, if you're gonna you know, run Oracle or you know, some database or SQL server, running them in the system, today we run them outside the system and we have all these benchmark records. You know, if you want to run it, get a benchmark record in a database, you pretty much got to use Violin. Even the Oracle Cisco benchmark in December, we made, they didn't put it in the press release, but if you look at the submission, it was Violin storage. That's like the first submission by Oracle as a vendor 
that didn't use their own storage since they bought Sun. If you want to get, a, you know, and clearly, Oracle is not a fan. You know, they're a competitor. You know, for them to use our storage means they had to. You know, so, but if you think about these other architectures, MongoDB, Cassandra, all these NoSQL systems, CouchDB, React, getting these things running inside a fault-tolerant server that, and then being able to scale it up horizontally, that is a huge deliverable. That, is a, that shifts the way people look at storage. And I'm going to stop right on time. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.